This is salty and sweet. It's good, yeah. I just don't know if it's good for breakfast, but it is what it is. Uh, let's, <laughs> it's 2020. It is. <laughs> we, we can have Doc how healthy they are. Right. Uh, 7-Eleven, let's uh, keep it in the Zoom room where we have the Physicians Advisory Group uh, Chairman, Dr. Ho Wen, uh, joining us. Good morning, Doc. Hey, good morning, guys. You know, it's um, it's uh, kind of coincidence, but, you know, I'm in, uh, uh, just uh, sad to hear what um, the situation that young woman is uh, yesterday, the church. But, you know, we, um, uh, last night we talked about um, uh, essential worker and uh, um, with the public health director, Arts and Augustine, and we want to have his blessing on, you know, uh, declare the clergyman, um, the father, the pastor, the priest, and everyone to be as part of essential worker. So that way that um, when they travel somewhere, that it, uh, they get back to the island, that uh, they don't have to be quarantined. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, spiritually, um, I tell you, people are under a lot of stress because of the, uh, the pandemic and and the, the father, priest, and the pastor, they really, um, really need that on the church. And, um, uh, and they provide such a powerful way to people to cope the stress. Um, sometimes more than a physician can uh, can do in our job. So you know, I'm glad that the uh, director agreed that uh, they will be essential worker so that they can uh, travel and come back to the church and then do the sermon for the people. So um, it just could come the right time for them to, to be. I thought they are in the past, but um, it's not. So um, it's, um, again, you know, uh, thank you all of them for what they do. Yeah. Doc, uh, was there a meeting last night with the Physicians Advisory Group? Yeah, that's 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 part of the meeting last night. Yeah. Get... Okay. Right. Um, so what was the other part? You guys talking about uh, what you're going to recommend to the governor? Because she told us on Giving Tuesday, December 15, December 16, she'd be making um, some kind of announcement about easing of restrictions. So what do you, what do you think we can expect? Uh, the number one thing we talked about last night, guys, is really the, um, the role out of the immunization, right? Yes. I mean, they do a lot of education on the public on the immunization. Uh, I, I tell you, as a physician and uh, I see a lot of patients in, in uh, so primary care in the clinic, I have to tell you, I hear so many rumors on, the, on this immunization is crazy. You know, uh, it's, I'm not sure where people read it. But um, I know that we had to roll out a very, very heavy education program about the immunization mm -hmm. to kind of um, let people know what's the risk and the benefit, the side effect, and all that kind of stuff about the immunization. Because, you know, um, uh, physician-wise, um, we need to talk to our patient about uh, the immunization um, and, and, and just like any just like any other immunization, right? The MMR, the Tdap, and uh, the Pneumovax, and everything else, uh, there's a risk and benefit. Uh, but as a physician, you know, the question I have yesterday, one of the uh, patients asked is that, you know, can a physician tell the the, um, the patient not to take them? As I say, you know, I think that part of us is we have to, to educate the patient but not because I believe that we tell a patient not to attack them. And so sadly, some you know, certain physicians doing that, and, and that's not the right thing. You know, so um, we're going to come out with a, a, a lot of education program to teach people, to instruct people everything about the immunization so they can make a consensus decision uh, on the COVID-19 vaccine. I know it's going to roll out sometime this month for the, for the frontliner, uh, but, you know, the, there's a lot more immunization coming down the pipeline the next few months, and they're going to go down the list of um, people in a high comorbidity uh, and uh, start giving out to protect the people uh, from hopefully not um, getting infected. But um, again, um, I think the, the next, um, this week or next week, there's a lot of things on media going to roll out and, and try to um, to to. Uh, let people know about what's coming down. You know, there's uh, two or three types of immunization out there from different company, and as you get approved by the uh, FDA, uh, they will roll out accordingly. But I think Pfizer, the one that come out first. Right. 
Yeah, um, I guess FDA is actually meeting um, now. Um, are you part of the Vaccine Antiviral Prioritization Policy Committee? Um, you know, the spring off on my plate, so the Dr. Jolyn Agen will be um, part of the pack on the uh, um, for on that committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, present the pack on that, mm -hmm. and they they have like about ten other physicians. You know, uh, some of the pack members are there. You know, Dr. Bird as part of GBME. Um, Dr. Lewis Cruz as part of Surgeon Cell. Um, so th there's a lot of uh, pack member there. Uh, Dr. The Cabrera. Dr. Cabrera is okay. one. Yeah. So Dr. Andy Bodario for uh, for the hospital. So there's uh, quite a few physicians there. So Dr. Ed McCallis from Infectious Disease. Um, I forgot who else in there, but there's a whole bunch. So um, they will meet and come up with a plan on how to roll this thing out, who gets the priority. So I say um, those are in the planning stage, so they're going to roll out more. But the most important thing is education about the patient. It's, it's so important, I tell you, uh, that we go forward and have the public fully aware on the immunization rather than than read something of, uh, on the website or whatever. You know, it's, uh, uh, one of my patients asked, uh, you know, they supposed to have the immunization and the government track them about, you know, because they inject something in your body. I said, oh, you know, don't even read that thing like that, you know, so. Uh, Doc, but are, are, there, are there any issues for uh, people who have, like, allergies? Uh, no, you know, even patients that have cancer um, on treatment, they, they really need it, mm -hmm. um, you know, just because it protect them. Uh, is your body make the antibody protect them? So, you know, those those patients that underwent the cancer treatment, uh, patient on dialysis, uh, those guys are fragile and, and, and they really need the immunization, you know, um, uh, so they probably part of the highest group beside the frontliner. Right. And, you know, we did interview yeah. uh, for everybody that's listening, Dr. Felix Cabrera earlier this week, and we went through a whole series of questions from side effects, uh, the age uh, limits, and things like that on on the vaccine. So we do have that on our YouTube yeah. uh, page. That was a great interview, Bruce. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the link in the comments. Yeah, so you, you really walk away with a lot of information right. uh, about that. But I know that there's going to be a whole lot of other information that um, the yeah. VAPC yep. is going to be rolling out. But Doc, I wanted to get back into the yeah. meeting last night. Um, you mentioned how clergy, uh, public health approved clergy members to be uh, considered essential workers. And having said that, are they also going to be uh, in the front of line for the vaccine? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Okay. We are more than likely, I would ask the question. I say, I know right now the front line to physician or the EMT, the firefighter, the policeman, everyone, the front line will be the first in line for vaccine. Uh, it's a series of two, so the, no, um, uh, we're gonna come. I think they'll come up with a, a, a list somehow to schedule because they have to make sure that the second shot is given okay. on time. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think right now just a front line first round. Okay. They have more mm -hmm. than enough front line, so okay. the high risk patient okay. probably will. Uh, get their um, their shot in December, so okay. hopefully uh, toward the end of this, the the next few um, you know, week or two here, that we will have the vaccine on the island. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what about uh, can you bring us up to speed? Is there any changes to quarantine? Um, you know, right now as you can see, the car score are uh, doing wonderful, and I I tell you. Uh, uh, thank you a lot for people who want. It's, it will not go down without everyone's help. So um, I think everyone do a wonderful job. And post Thanksgiving, we are in that area already. And, uh, and the car score is still very low. So our people do a very good job on that. So, you know, um, I think that most likely what we recommend is that um, to open more, uh, relax more restriction in Guam. Uh, so, you know, regarding the gathering, the number of gathering, uh, maybe some uh, indoor dining, uh, a lot of stuff so our people here on the, on the island can enjoy our holiday a lot more with, uh, you know, 
with the three W, you know, uh, the face mask, the social distance, and hand washing. Okay, so uh, during the holiday season, we can enjoy our family on the island. Um, regarding the quarantine, you know, we, we still uh, talk about, still plan about it. Uh, I think some, because the cars score went down very fast, which is wonderful for the island. Um, the, the the quarantine, the modification, probably more likely will not aff- go into effect until after the holiday because okay. we kind of create our own bubble uh, on the island so that our islands have remained safe. Because you know, there's a lot of um, positivity rate in the state. Right. And, you know, this is where I would ask the people that plan to go back to the island for the family for holiday to plan accordingly to expect that you're going to be in quarantine just um you know that way um, to make sure that you don't bring anything back into the island you know it's um uh, I, I know it's a, a thing but you got a choice one or the other one you know so um but um, we can see enough of what our island did in the past you know two or three weeks or so uh in an effort to curb the car score so we did a wonderful job. We don't want to ruin it. You know, I mean, there's, um, I think even FEMA um, state that be very careful because if we um, don't take the necessary step to keep the car score down, that um, if the surge go up uh, mid-January, uh, when everyone in the state uh, go way up and we need the uh, help from the FEMA, that the help will be not uh, so readily right. available yeah, yeah. Uh, because mm-hmm. they you know, so that's the part where we have to think very carefully uh, because, uh, again, if the state go way up, you know, this is beyond any point in the past eight months, uh, we don't want to get in that stage again right. yeah. and have it come. That, that's why it's important for, to, for to uh, keep an eye on how we're going to ease these restrictions and uh, do it prudently, yes. right, Doc? You're just not going to flip a switch yes. and... Yeah. Uh, again, we we don't go down this low car score by by not everyone help. You know, this is wonderful. I'll tell you, uh, it's so happy to see that uh, there's um, a few days in the clinic now that we have zero positive. You know, that's something that we haven't seen now uh, for for months, and it's so relieved to see that. So, uh, thank you everyone for so much for doing your part on this. Mm-hmm. So you guys are going to recommend uh, easing of further restrictions to the governor. Are we talking like indoor dining or lifting um, the yeah. capacity? I think most likely capacity because, you know, um, I know that the, um, you know, our family tend to gather in, in larger number than five or six, or whatever we have right now. So I think that the most important during the holiday uh, just because our people have been uh, done so well uh, uh, during the Thanksgiving that uh, during the holiday, you know, relax those number, maybe, you know, get to 20 something and let our people gather. Again, during the gathering, um, they probably need to, to be very cautious to and not let their guard down. Mm-hmm. Um, were there any other exemptions uh approved uh, last night other than for uh, members of the clergy? Yeah, no, that's that's all we push for, just okay. because we are identified that there's no, during the holiday, Sabrina, Chris, even without the pandemic, um, stress level during the holiday is tremendous. That's where you see lots of people in the hospital for, for whatever reason, the, the, the stress that they have. So it's important for have all the clergymen to be able to be at the church to to help people, you know, um, mentally, you know, spiritually, to go over this um this uh, this season, you know. So I, I tell you, it's important for them to be there for for the for the people. So yeah, that's that's what we talked about last night regarding the session workers. Really push the issue for the clergymen. Anything else okay, discussed? But- well, uh, was there something you know, with a, uh, a was there like a clergyman who came into Guam that had to go into quarantine or something that prompted this uh, doc or was it just because like you said oh it's the holidays yeah you know be, 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 uh, yeah the, all the clergymen typically when they come to Guam they got quarantine and you know uh, I know there's a lot of short of uh, uh, clergymen out there 
um, to 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 uh, serve in the church. Uh, so to put someone in the in the quarantine for six seven days when they they truly are essential worker. You know, I tell you, um, they they help so much people. You know, we as a phys- uh, physician can talk to people and help them stress and give them medication, but spiritually. They are so powerful. They they need to be there for people, especially during this time of, of holiday when the stress level uh, go way up. So um, um, I say um, Father Mike there, and uh, unfortunately that incident that um, the the woman yesterday is probably part of it. So I mm. I feel. For... Oh, huh. The other one that we ask is that. You know, we we see just a, f- a few cases of um, a positive uh, yes and for first time is all on the young people between 20 to 40 years old. So I would ask that you know our young people again, you know, to be just and and you know uh, um, and just take care of yourself. If you feel sick, you know, stay away from your family uh, and go see a doctor to, to be tested right away. Uh, that way. And prevent any further spreading in the community. So um, uh, please do your part. Um, as been like say between 20 and 40 years, um, it's not a goal. Just go in to check to make sure so that way uh, we can keep our cars going low. Mm-hmm. I did I did want to just follow up on something that Lillian had mentioned when we interviewed her earlier this week about although that they, they are seeing the number of uh, COVID admissions Uh, going down, they are seeing an increase in um, other uh, patients that are coming in. So the overall hospital census for non-COVID cases. And so is there anything you can speak to about that? I mean, are these people Uh, that that just withheld going to to their their checkups or were scared to go, you know, because of COVID? Um, no, I tell you, just like I say to a few in the past moment that, you know, during this season of, um, you know, uh, Christmas and New Year and Thanksgiving, uh, typically every year, even before the pandemic, you know, we see a, a rise in, in the non-COVID case. People just get sick because of stress um, and they get a lot of admission during this time of the year, you know, um, uh, because of the flu, because of uh, heart disease, because of stroke, uh, because of infection. But typically, the, this time of the year is one of the busiest time for uh, for both hospital. Um, uh, so that's that's why that's that's why uh, Lydia and say that it's because you know people end up in the hospital a whole lot uh, again. You know, um, and part of it, um, Sabrina, this year it might be worse just because um, again people are still reluctant to go to the, to the clinic to do the chronic care management. Mm-hmm. So I urge the, the physician clinic to be proactive and, and kind of call the patient that didn't show up in the past three to four months or so for the chronic care management, bring them in, take care of them to make sure that the, the blood pressure, the diabetes and the cholesterol, everything else under control. So uh, I think that's part of the, um, the um, the medical field that can can be proactive and and try to contact this patient because uh, if not, uh, they going to um, really have a sharp rise in the non COVID admission to the hospital. Well, thank you so much, Doc, uh, for for the update on everything. You're welcome. Right thank on, you, Supreme. Be Again, safe. Uh, everyone, much for uh, doing wonderful job in the past few weeks. Enjoy your yogurt covered uh, virtual pretzels, Doc. It's and good. It's pro. It's got and probiotics. Your apple juice. Yeah, and your apple juice. Your <laughs> apple juice. <laughs> All right, Doc. Take it I'm, easy. I, <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. Yep. Well, there you go, Jay. Okay. A, a uh, comment from BT Nguyen uh, saying, "I love Sabrina's mask." Oh, thank you. Right on. But, well, you know, we got Santa Todd in the I, house. I know, but really, I mean, you, you're you classy. Where are you getting your mask, Bree? <laughs> the gas station. Okay. I, uh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes. And then, or a pay less, uh, uh, I might get some of the uh, Anthony's masks. Right on. Uh, and I got some from him.